European migrants who've come to the UK have paid more in taxes than they received in benefits, according to a study by University College London. It suggests that migrants from the 10 member states which joined the EU a decade ago contributed nearly £5 billion more in taxes than they received in benefits or from using public services. The Prime Minister has pledged to tackle levels of EU migration despite criticism from Brussels, as our economics editor Robert Peston explains. The changing face of Britain, a Polish supermarket for Polish workers. So what does a new study show about whether migrants from Poland and other new EU countries pay more in taxes than the benefits and public services they receive, their so-called fiscal impact? For all immigrant groups, we find that those who arrived after 2000 have made a substantial net fiscal contribution to the UK fiscal system. That is true for immigrants uh, from the new accession countries as much as for immigrants from the old European countries. The impact on tax and spending of immigration, according to the study, is that migrants from the likes of Poland and the Czech Republic paid £5 billion more to the state than they took out between 2000 and 2011. But as for all migrants living in Britain, they took out £114 billion more than they put in between 1995 and 2011. Now the reason the European Union migrants tend to pay their way in Britain is because they're younger and in work. In Basildon, are Essex man and woman now persuaded that immigrants are making a positive contribution? No, never they in don't. a million years. They don't. No, they don't. I already feel quite positive about migration. I work for the NHS. The NHS couldn't exist without migration. No, actually, I feel strongly against uh, immigration. Um, I say it should be controlled much more than it is at the moment. Debate over the costs and benefits of immigration is not remotely new. When Jews like my family settled in this part of London's East End, there was great controversy about whether or not they'd be good or bad for Britain. Today, nobody doubts the cultural and economic contribution of those immigrants. Neater handwriting, a uh, boom goes the dynamite. Immigration as positive or negative for businesses like this fast-growing tech company. How important is it for you to be able to recruit from the rest of the European Union? It's incredibly useful uh, to be able to recruit from as wide a talent pool as possible. And it's not enough for us to be able to recruit in the UK because unfortunately there's a chronic skill shortage. There's a talent crunch that's affecting many of the companies here in East London and across the UK. Uh, and in order to be able to fill that deficit, we need to look elsewhere. But what's good for business isn't necessarily good for all of us. If we don't get immigration down, our population will increase by 12 million in the next 20 years. That's twice the population of Scotland. That has huge implications, uh, not just for uh, our infrastructure, but also for our environment, also for our society. Commerce and money, the direct impact on our prosperity, is part of the immigration debate. And maybe some of that's been settled today. But there are much wider questions, too, about the kind of Britain we want to live in. Robert Peston, BBC News. The new president of the European Commission has taken another swipe at David Cameron, claiming that he has a problem.